Okay, it's the beginning. 7.25 in the morning, it's Wednesday. We're getting ready to leave in about five minutes so that we can meet with Jody at the bins before they open. But first, Vicki did demand that she have some snacks and I have some snacks. It's gonna be an all day thing. We gotta have snacks, we gotta have stuff to drink. So I'm packing this amazing uh, little, what is this, igloo, whatever it is. Um, little, why can't I think of what it's called? What's it called? It's a vintage 80s igloo cooler. Cooler, I'm like, why can't I think of the word cooler? Because it's too early. All right, so what we got for snacks? Vicki said she wants two sodies, she wants a juice. She's got her eBay bottle filled with ice water. Um, I This is actually Arnold Palmer lemonade and tea. We've got some almonds that Vicky won't eat, but they are delicious. I got a sodi for me. We got some kind bars. There's a little extra of everything because, you know, Sunny did demand that there be snacks. Uh, Sunny Las Vegas. We got some meat sticks. I think Allie would approve of that. How do you feel about meat sticks? <laughs> We got some string cheese, and we got some uh, chocolate peanut butter cookies, yes. and we've got leftover pizza from Red Dwarf, delicious pizza from last night. Throw that in there. All right, we gonna be able to make all this fit? Maybe. I don't know. Let's get out of here and go find Jody. What do you think? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm bright-eyed, sort of. <laughs> get yourself situated back there. Hey, look, we picked somebody up. Hi. It's Jody. We just pick up strangers on the side of the road now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're here like way early at 746. There's already people staring in the window. Uh, one thing we realized is that we're not going to be able to ship. Uh, we, normally we ship first thing in the morning and we're not going to get up extra early for that. So 630 is early enough. Thank you very I much. I know. But our mail lady comes at, uh, she comes now about six o'clock. So technically, I mean, we get this closes at four. We could race home and, and ship, but otherwise, if we can't do that, then our post office closes at nine. I can go drop everything off tonight. So it's gonna be a long day, regardless. We'll be able um, to text our mail lady when we get out of here and see if she hasn't come by yet. If she she, she won't have come by. Six. She comes at six every day. Uh, so what are we looking for today? What's gonna happen? I don't know. I'm hoping they have linens today they haven't had linens the last few weeks mm -hmm. like at all mm -mm. no they just for whatever they like ran out or something and so they've just had like an extra row of clothing which has been cool but there hasn't been any like blankets. you know i love me some linens i mean i think i shipped seven blankets in the last 10 days mm -hmm. so yeah i love looking for plush i've found multiple hundred plus dollar sales of plush at this Ooh, bins before really so. mm -hmm. like what um the jelly cats so I found the Jelly Cat Pillow Pals. Like one was a pig and one was a um, panda and they both sold for over $100. I so wasn't that was even good. aware of those. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to show me those if you grab one. Yeah, and I also got a uh, Yoshi, like the black Yoshi Pillow Pal. Mm. And that sold for, I think almost 300. <gasps> Wow. wow. All right, apparently we need to follow Jody around for the mm -hmm. plush tips. I did get a jelly cat last week mm -hmm. um, with the tag still, and nice. it's a little retired one. He does sell for like 40 to 50, which I was pleased because not all of them sell for that. Right. Um, because I have a few that I've gotten before and I just kind of sit on them because they're the ones that there's too many and they're not worth a bunch. But now um, are you really cute? Are you worried about Jody being here because she knows what to look for when it comes to vintage clothing, women's clothing. So you got a little competition. Nah, no? there's plenty. Okay, there's plenty. Um, it opens at eight. There's plenty and I know Jody will be fairly selective because she has a death pile that goes up to her eyeballs. Mm. So she's more selective than I am. So yeah, I will take more of the bread and butter. She's just gonna be looking for like the really, really cool stuff she can't leave behind, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Or she can wear it herself. time was me and you passing stuff back and forth. Exactly. My Barbie outfit that I wore the first time, the pink tutu, she gave me that the last time that we were here. See, and I didn't realize it until after, until Katie told me that, because <laughs> I did <laughs> give her that, because I was like, I have a bunch of tutus, but this one is your, has your name on it. <laughs> and little did we know she was going to be wearing it to yeah. the Barbie yeah. movie, and it fit perfectly. Jody and I went to the Barbie movie, Vicky wasn't interested, and since we went, and it, first of all, it was awesome, it was amazing, we loved it, 
Uh, Jody loves it so much. She's already seen it at least one more time. Yeah. Are you gonna see it again before it's out of the yeah, theater? Yeah, I've got at least one more outfit to wear. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, so the bins open at eight. They close at four. So we have eight hours. We brought snacks. Uh, we're hopefully gonna have some other people show up. I know uh, our friend Danielle. I know Sunny, Sunny Las Vegas. Uh, said he was gonna come, so we'll see. I know Corey's coming. Corey's coming. Um, so we got eight hours. I mean, to me, the hope is we can get enough to like source enough for a whole week because obviously we're not gonna be able to get any other work done today. So if I can get this enough This has stuff, to be my only trip this week. So yeah. I've gotta, if I'm here all day, I've gotta source at least 75 clothing items. Okay. On top of some, some hard goods or whatever for yeah. me. We'll probably have to like check out a few times so that we can bring stuff out to the car. So, cause I mean, we don't wanna have multiple carts and we're definitely gonna fill up more than Yeah, and we won't have the room to do that either. Yeah. All right. Let's... I'm representing Ohio Tiki Nuts, by the way, today. Oh, oh nice. I didn't even have Julie. one of those shirts. Man, did Julie send that to you? Outrageous. I got it on what now? Man, Julie, <laughs> I need one of those shirts. That's the right color and everything. I would wear that. <laughs> Damn yeah. you. I've known her longer. Speaking of Chris and Jeez. Julie, I thought of them last night because we went to a tiki bar for some delicious Detroit-style pizza. We'll have to bring them next time they come here. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, not that they even watch our channel, but guys, we miss you. We haven't seen you since the remix last year, and they're not going to be able to make it this year, so... I know, I miss them. It's been too we long. We love you. It's been too long. We do. All right, let's see what happens today. <laughs> we'll be checking in every once in a while since we can't film inside, unfortunately. But nope. bye for now. Howdy. What's Hello, up? everyone. Welcome to Katie's channel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm here with Jesse and Trevor. Uh, so when we got here this morning, they showed up, they rolled up. Jesse yeah. was talking big game about how they were going to challenge us to an all-day yep. thrift battle here at the bins. What time is it right now? It's uh, a little bit past 9. <laughs> it's 9.30. It's 9.30. It's 9.30. Uh, he said he wasn't mentally prepared no, for definitely not. the, not the for stress and all the pressure. So yeah. So he is forfeiting. Yeah, a four, you know, one oh, Katie and Vicky, but hey, we'll, we'll yeah. do it again. <laughs> and, and Trevor came to the bins for the first time yesterday, right? Yep, first time yesterday. And now you're hooked? Time. Yep, second time today. And uh, tomorrow's my off day, and I'm probably gonna come tomorrow at 8 a.m. Yeah, so nice. Don't do drugs, kids. Don't do but, drugs. <laughs> but yeah, we spent 62 bucks today and got three bags, mostly like newer stuff we'll throw on our website, a couple cool vintage pieces. This is my favorite piece from today. I'm That's guessing cool. I'll probably get like 50 to 60 bucks for this, so. Even if that pays for everything today, then the rest of it's free. Yeah, see? Jesse's do. not even just doing streetwear anymore. Nope. He's like getting art, mofos. Yeah. Art. I found boys. a $4,000 poster here three days ago. I didn't even show you that. Yeah, it's uh, Mr. Brainwash. Right here. Hold on. I think I still have a photo of it. So he's friends with Banksy. They made a whole documentary about him and Banksy together. And I didn't know exactly what it was, but I got it back to the shop. It was signed and numbered. Was it rolled up or uh, was it? It was rolled up, yeah. I just thought it was cool. I could see Marilyn Monroe's face on it. I was like, oh, this is a 50 to $100 poster. And then, yeah, it ended up being $4,000. It's still available on his website, but here, I don't know if you can see that, but those are all the listings currently on eBay for it. That's crazy. But same exact thing. Have you listed yours yet? Uh, no, we're going to frame it up and then and then list it. But Very yeah. cool. Cost me $1.60. What's going on over there? Hey, little baby. Little baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Peace out. Later. It is 1022. I'm out here by myself. I just went ahead and paid for my first bag of stuff because it was getting pretty full and I want to keep my cart with a lot of extra room but it was 22 pounds I got a couple of things that Vicky's gonna be real mad about when she sees them but we'll save that for later so far so good so we're a little over a quarter into the day and I got one full bag 22 pounds so if I could get three more full bags that would be awesome um, maybe get close to 100 pounds that would be pretty cool <laughs> All right, we're taking a break. It's almost noon. We're almost halfway through. Everyone get their hands clean. Adrian, what'd you get? Subwoofer. That's Sub, That's subwoofer. It. What's all this? Subwoofer. What's all this crap? Nothing. I can't Long film break. Dynasty's face yeah, because... Dynasty will scare everyone away. All right, tell us about what's happening here. This That's is... a bunch of bread and butter. Okay. And some designer in there somewhere. Yeah, you got some uh, new tag stuff. Yep. That's a lot. How many pounds? I don't know. We pay 280 something. <laughs> 280 something. The 1982 National Enquirer. That's the most important find today. Ooh, Zsa, Zsa, Zsa Gabor. Gabor. Hello. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm gonna be up yeah. on my news shortly. It should say the pounds. Let's see the pounds. 
Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know actually. That's probably good info for me to. All right, we've got 63.5, 82.5, pretty good. And that's just for half the day. Yeah. Well, no, and you guys didn't even, did you? No, you were there right at the beginning, pretty much. I was much. in the beginning. He came in late yeah. after drinking. Yes. <laughs> Adrian was a little hungover. He had to go get himself I'm some booze. Now. Now, now he's pretty good. So, a little All right. All right. Vicky is currently busting into the snacks. We're halfway through the day. There's a plane overhead. It's very loud. Uh, how, how, how's your day going so far, halfway through? Um, considering we've been here much longer than I'm normally here, I did not get that much stuff. Okay. I've got a couple of big plushes that are taking up a lot of the room in the cart, but in general. Not you're not feeling like you're getting nothing great. your extra time's worth? No. Nope. Hmm. I found some good stuff, but I've got the bag that I showed you guys earlier, and then I've got another almost full bag. I know Jody's got, uh, her cart's almost completely full right now. How are you feeling halfway in? I feel like you I lost two nails, but... No! Well, that just means... Nails. That just means you're digging hard. I know, right? Yeah. Worth it. Worth I'll it. i my nails in tomorrow, so it's fun. There you go. All right, let's 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 get some uh, some snacks. Why are you mad, bro? So, Goodwill, this location, has decided to stop putting out linens entirely for good. Pretty much which is like 30% of my business is linens, and I get them here. So, yeah, I guess, Liz, I'm coming to Colorado. Well, apparently I went to investigate, and I guess for them it's less than 1% of the money that they make, and it does take up a big amount of space. So, for Goodwill, they make a lot more money on like the clothing, and so they took all of the textiles away to add a whole bunch of more of the clothing things, but for somebody who actually gets like blankets and stuff like that blankets and sheets and yeah yeah it's a bummer but other than that your feet hurt you're tired my back hurts more than my feet you so you've been here for what time is it five hours which is and how much did you spend two and a half hours more than i normally and how much did you spend 71 dollars yeah so you didn't have you actually had a pretty mediocre day. It did not it does not appear that being here for a full day makes it better. Not for me anyway. I didn't make I didn't get a lot of good inventory, which means I need to come back at least one more time this week, if not more. Which makes me not happy. Yeah. Well that's what this doing these uh, challenges is all about. It doesn't mean you're gonna keep doing it for good. It just means you're just trying it out for funsies. I can't, I can look at and now directly. Sorry. Jody and I are gonna keep going because she's she has to drive me home and she's stuck with me for another three hours. Oh, yep. Jody's driving you home, so that means I don't have to come back? Yep, you can go home. Right, and I'm going home take a nap. Yeah. Well, you can go do your shipping, and then that way I don't have to drive it in. Oh, all right, that too. Can you do that, please? Thanks. Yeah, Bye. Okay. Bye. So we got the boys here. Shut the thing down. Shut it down. There's Britt's treasure. You get anything really good? That's a lot. Uh, I don't know yet. I don't know, I don't know yet. You military just... trench coat that might be pretty old. So that'd you, be just, cool. you just bought it and ran? Yeah, I don't really look over again. There's yeah. probably a bunch of junk I'll be throwing away, actually. Oh, well. Where'd you get Mike? Right. Did you get those snakes? Do you know? No, I passed on the snakes. The comps were in good, like fifteen dollars, brand new. Okay. As cool as they were, and I can't give them them. They nephews. were giant snakes. They were like ten feet long. I know, and I can't give them to my nephews because my sister watches my videos and she'll know where they came from, and she's. She like, won't allow it. Yeah. So, but did you know Victoria's Secret? Because I got a lot of it. Look at what Mikey got. Woohoo! All these Vince people, they're, probably, they're sleeping on all this stuff. This is bread and butter. 15, they're scared of the bras. Twenty dollars all day long. I had no problem handling this. I probably got like at least 100 bucks in here for six bucks. And you and you were here for like a half hour. I was. Yeah, I hope no one else gets onto my uh, technique here because it's profitable. There's so a lot of back. Yeah, there's a lot of Victoria's Secret in Las Vegas. Yep. So yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked. I'm glad I came and I came for the challenge and yeah, that's all I'll say. I mean, did you really come for the challenge? You came at the end. No, well, I came to support the challenge. <laughs> I came to support the challenge. I thought about bringing snacks and that's as far as I went. Okay, all yeah. right. Did but you no. bring snacks? I'm trying to be healthier. I'm trying to be healthier. Okay, and then I didn't think to actually film, but all of my stuff's in here. I've got like three bags. There's Jody's pine cones. I got three bags of stuff, plus the bag of stuff that I got from, uh, that I got earlier that I put in the car that Vicky went home with. But here is all of Jody's treasures. That she didn't need. She had, that she didn't need. Her cart was overflowing. How do you feel right now? Um, guilty, buyer's remorse. <laughs> Just not, not, 
Not a good feeling. Not good. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I would like to point out Jody was the one who volunteered to do an all day 13 challenge of the band. And we did it. Ooh, ooh. But I just want to say, I bought this much stuff in two hours in there before. So yeah. I was being pretty selective. <laughs> Technically, they close at four. You still have 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but they but they took they brought the last rotation out at like 2:45. Yeah. So it's like I'm not sticking around for an hour and, and 15 minutes to look through the bins. I'm done. I'm done. We did every single one. Dang nabbit. Uh, but yeah, I would say it's probably not worth the whole day. It's like you, you get major burnout like middle of the day, and the rotations are slower. The last couple of rotations were actually decent. But um, I think you're better off just coming two, three times a week if you're close to one. I mean, if you don't live close to a bins and you can only go once in a while, then yeah, go all day. But otherwise, like I would not recommend this as a regular way of doing sourcing. I think you're better off feeling awake and chipper and doing it a couple hours at a time. So, and over here, Britt, what's happening? Stop looking at my tires. Uh, would you want to tell us about, um, no. about Jody's tires? Jody's tires are ridiculously bad. That's a, that's a new, thing that Gen X doesn't know about is like no tread on the tires that makes you go faster it makes you go faster well, that is true <laughs> <laughs> no I know about that <laughs> but not for very long <laughs> all right let's get this stuff home and I got to show Vicki all the exciting stuff that I got for her after she left and then uh, Vicki and I will show you guys the highlights at least of what we got today because we're not going to show every single thing it'd take too long would you like to take us on a journey of your menagerie that you have accumulated? Yes. So here's part of my haul from yesterday. Apparently it was a stuffed animal day. Um, none of these are like worth a million dollars, but a few of them are worth a 30 to 40, the majority are 15 to 20. So I'm just gonna, they're very easy to photograph and ship, obviously. I don't always do plush, but sometimes I can't resist. Okay, so a lot of these are from the same type of collection with tags on them. Um, and again, I don't necessarily say pick them all up, but some, a handful of them are worth around 30 or 40. Most of them are worth around 15 or so, but they're these little things with tags that have, they're all jungle animals. So they're all like, I can't to play with you. This is Kate the elephant. <coughs> they're cute, right? Um, there's like, here's the lion. And they all have a couple of different tags on them. A couple of them say Jungle Joe's Safari Friends, and then there's a couple that say Rainforest Friends. I really do think they're just the same animals, maybe produced and sold to different companies. So maybe this came from a vendor or something like that, but who knows. All but two still work with um, making the noises they're supposed to make. I think batteries are probably dead on the other two, but I can't find a way to open them to replace the battery. So anyway. Here's the lion. Hi, Longfellow is my name. Longfellow is my name. They're cute. There's a raccoon and a fox and a turtle and a skunk and a zebra. And then this is the same type of plush company, but this is just King Kong. I think it was uh, done somewhere around the, the revamp of the movie a few years ago. Um, this is just a Gans um, woolly mammoth. He's cute. He probably sells for like 25 this is, I thought it was a jelly cat, but it's kind of, I think it's the precursor to jelly cat, Mary Meyer. This one's only worth like 15 to $20, but some of these are quite valuable. So if you see this name on a plush, definitely look it up. And again, he probably cost me like 25 cents in weight. So I don't mind a 15 or $20 sale. Again, I'm trying to bulk up my stuff for uh, Q4, but also when these have tags on them, these are really good collector items for people to give as gifts um, you know, people have things, some people like dogs, some people like bears, some people like cats. So the person that loves, I don't know, seals is going to get that as a gift for Christmas, I'm sure. So anyway, they're all kind of cute. These are just uh, FAO Schwartz. Again, probably not worth a ton by themselves, but they're really well made um, plush and they're so soft and clean. They got the little button on the butt as opposed to like stife bears that have the button on the ear. Um, and these are soft stife bears are mostly mohair. Um, but anyway, I got a little koala and a little bear. If they're not worth a bunch by themselves, I'll probably lop these two together. They're just very cute. And then this little Sharpe wrinkly dog. I think he's Gans, he doesn't have a tag on him, but I'm gonna do a little Google search. Okay, uh, again, this one's not worth a ton. This was sold by Walmart. This is just a Coca-Cola bear, but he's big and he has his tags on him. So 
It originally sold for $20. I don't know how old this is. I can't tell, I don't have my glasses on. Um, I can't see the date on it, but probably 90s because that was when the polar bear thing and the Coca-Cola polar bear thing was pretty popular. So I don't know, I'll sell him for like 30 or 40, I think. And then lastly in the plush line, I've got this big, huge Hallmark Santa. Um, he's not the Polar Express Santa. He's like probably 35, 36 inches, but I would really like to know if anybody knows who he is. Google um, Lens is actually just pulling up like every damn Santa Claus. And obviously there's a lot. So if anybody knows who he is, he's not the Polar Express one. The face is different. He's got this little lopsided smile that's like in the middle of his beard. Um, and he has a tag that says Hallmark, made for Hallmark. So let me know if you know who he is. All right, moving on to the actual items I picked up. Um, these are probably one of my favorite picks from the day. This is a pair of vintage uh, Zodiac sandals. They're leather, they're distressed with the rivets. They have heavy um, like wooden soles. And this is the brand Zodiac. They made stuff starting in like the 60s and the label has not changed a lot. So I'm gonna have to do a little reference work, but I do think these are 70s uh, based on the heel and the style. Either way, I'll probably list them for like 65 bucks and they're not super heavy. Um, this is a brand you should look for in bags and in purses and in shoes and I guess hats. I've bought a couple hats. I don't know if this will sell for a ton, but probably at least $30. The brand is Eric Javits, J-A-V-I-T-S. It's kind of like um, old lady high quality stuff. Um, so this is just a hat that's got a little bit mashed, but I'll put it on the head mannequin. And it's very light. Anyway, I can never resist these types of little embroidered blouses. I mean, it's not Johnny Was, uh, but Johnny Was definitely elevated the trend. Magnolia, Pearl, and Johnny Was. This is an inexpensive one. I can tell by the fabric. It's just a rayon, but it has a cute little, you know, ampere waist, and it looks a little bit vintagey although it's not. The tag tells me that it's modern inside, but there's no brand and there's no RA number. So it really could be like, I mean, this could be Walmart for all I know. I don't know. I'm just going to list it based on its own merits. So probably the $30 bread and butter type item. I have a vintage 90s Liz Claiborne um, dress. What is nice about it is that it's long sleeved. It has a drop waist with pleats and it's a bigger size. So this would fit a modern large or extra large. I think it's tagged as a size 14 and I think that sizing is pretty accurate. Bread and butter, probably $30, $40. This one Jody found yesterday and I love it. I would have grabbed it had I seen it. This is a long terry cloth cover up or house coat or even like hostess dress. Definitely the type of thing you'd wear around the house. It is 70s, it's 100% terry cloth. It kind of has this roll down faux turtleneck type thing. There are no tags, but there are pockets. And it has these, uh, the pleated uh, sleeves. So it's not handmade, and this has the elastic on the wrists, but while it's not blown out, it's also not super strong. Um, I don't know that it ever was. Anyway, it's this nice red. Teresa would like this although I don't think she'd wear it. Um, but every time I have terry cloth, vintage terry cloth cover-ups and things like that, they sell for like 75 to $125. So I'll probably list this for like 125 and take offers. I'd be happy with anything over 75. This is not vintage. I thought it was at first. It's not vintage, but it's kind of like a retro rugby uh, shirt by Polo. It's small. It just has like cool uh, 90s colors in it. Like the hunter green and the navy blue and the burgundy and the gold that's all 90s but this is a current tag so <clears throat> this is felt right here i'm gonna need to sweater shave that which you know i love <laughs> no not really but again this is probably like maybe 30 dollars. this one katie grabbed for me i definitely would have grabbed it myself although blazers are slow movers i still can't resist a good blazer um, this has a nice cut to it but more than the cut it has these really fun funky buttons and all different types of fabrics and textures. So it's multi-fabric, multi-texture. Um, it's a size medium, probably 90s. Brand is not important, but it's pretty cool. 
I don't know what I'll list it for, probably like $75, but honestly, I'd be happy with anything over 45 or 50. These are also just gonna be a bread and butter, bread, bread and butter, bread and butter, staple BB, not old BB, these are probably early 2000s, early to mid 2000s, that was when the style was most popular. What I got them for is obviously it's got these really cool beading everywhere, they're fun, they're funky, they're a small size, unfortunately, but a lot of the BB stuff I find is. But they've got a cuffed ankle. They're just in really nice shape. I don't know what I'll list them for. Maybe 50 bucks or so. I just like them. This is my second uh, happy find of the day. I did give Katie a whole bunch of t-shirts that I found. And this is the only one I kept for myself. But this is a vintage 90s. It's on the old Lee tag made in the USA. 1995 Earth Day shirt. I just kind of love it, right? Um, I don't know when Earth Day was started. I'll check that obviously before I list it, but it may have even been like early 90s. So I kind of think this might have been one of the early ones. Oh, it says it right on the back. Never mind. The 25th anniversary of Earth Day at the Capitol Mall in 1995. So it also has a whole bunch of bands that performed that day. I don't know how rare this shirt is, but it's pretty cool. Boys to men. I am definitely going to list this high. What high means, I don't know. Maybe 150 and see. Uh, I mean, I, there can't be millions of them out there, right? So we'll see what happens with that. This Katie got for me, not vintage, just kind of a retro look. It's probably one of those brands that sells uh, retro vintage pinup looking stuff. Super cute. In fact, I would almost keep this for myself, except this color is just not my color. It's um, kind of a cropped sweater with, it's green with the cherries, but then it has a little crop sweater top that goes underneath it. So I'll probably list this for like 40, 50 bucks. It's really cute. Katie also found this for me. I do buy a lot of Quacker Factory. Mostly I buy the sweaters. The sweaters seem to sell the fastest, but Quacker Factory, for those who don't know, it's a QVC brand. Definitely also an old lady brand, but it is well-made stuff. Um, this is just a stretch denim jacket with little American flags all over it and a dark wash. It's probably from the 90s or early 2000s. I mean, America, right? I don't know what to list it for. Again, maybe like 40, 50 bucks. Also Quacker Factory, I found this. So, uh, and they were at very separate times of the day. So I don't know if this was the same person that donated, but they clearly loved Quacker Factory and America. So this is the sweater. And then it's got the flag on the back. A little too late for this year. Maybe someone will buy it for um, next year or somebody that likes to wear flag stuff year round. I'll probably list it for like 50. Now these two were probably not fantastic buys, but some of you may know I have a hard time resisting vintage kids clothing. This is a vintage like late 80s, early 90s gunny sacks dress. It's not the very popular gunny sack styles. It does have this big bib front and it's in a muted pink cotton. What I'm gonna have to do is sweater shape this as well because it's been washed a lot and it's a very lightweight fabric, but I think I can still get like $30 out of it. I may even lot it with the next dress because they're the same size and they probably came from the same kid. Um, it's just, it's cute. It's a faded, like almost light pink with a white pattern on it. And then there's this one, same size. This actually has been dry cleaned. This is also um, 90s. No great specific brand. I don't even know what the brand would be. Doesn't matter. Um, just a pretty floral dress. Some people really still like that very girly, traditional, um, modest type of clothing, which is harder and harder to find if you're someone that likes to dress your daughter this way um, for whatever reasons, you know, church, religion, um, just modesty in general. This type of clothing is harder and harder to find in mainstream stores. Kids clothing is getting a lot more um, like play clothes, right? So you don't find as many um, things that are, are traditional in style. This has a little bit of yellowing on one little part of the lace. I think I'm just gonna spot treat that since the rest of the dress is in great shape. And again, I may list them together, I may not. Probably would be like a $30 dress by itself. Um, this is fun, ugly Christmas sweater. But look, it's got kitty cats. It's, got, it's all raised with appliques and bows and this little 3D sock and it's just hideous, hideous. Uh, it's super warm and thick though. It's really nicely, nicely made. Um, made by the Sweater Loft in New York, made in the USA. 
I'll probably list this for like 75 bucks. This is in great shape as well and also will require some sweater shaving. <sighs> that's like three things, guys. Three. That's my limit for like the year. Uh, Santa Cruz, I can't resist. Santa Cruz is kind of like um, Hard Rock Cafe for me. Sometimes it sells, sometimes it doesn't. This is like early Y2K. When they have the paper tags, they're 90s, 80s, 90s, and Y2K. Um, most of them have gone away with the paper tags in general. So vintage, but not super vintage. It says medium. I would say this is a girl's medium. It's kind of small. It has the big dot on the back. So it's just kind of funky with the paint splatter. $30 or so. As you can see, there's not a ton of stuff. I did not have a really good day for spending over six hours at the bins, which means I need to go at least one or two more times this week. We're going to go tomorrow and then probably one day on the weekend. Um, it's unfortunate because I really was hoping to get it all done in one day yesterday, but the gods were not with me. Okay, so this is also vintage, probably late 80s, early 90s. I would call this a swim cover-up or an oversized tunic top. Uh, it, you can see that it has a stain on there, a couple stains. I'm going to try to bleach this. It is white, should bleach, but again, these are yellow stains and they are definitely harder to get out. So if I can't get it clean, it's just going to get tossed. It's pretty dingy. Um, somebody maybe wear it as a sleep shirt. I don't know. I would probably wear it as a sleep shirt. It's comfy looking. So even if the stains don't come out after I bleach it, I may keep that and wear it myself. I love cotton sleepwear. Um, these are just retro, high-waisted, um, Shorts made for a pinup look. They're made by Tatiana. It's beach, <clears throat> beach bash line by Tatiana. Tatiana is a local company actually here in Las Vegas that sells a lot of pinup clothing, uh, pinup style clothing. These are just really cute shorts, probably $30. Again, they're super lightweight. I maybe paid 35 cents for them. These are vintage. Um, I would say 80s or 90s on these. Assembled in Mexico, so 90s, I'm right with the style and colors. Um, just striped, somewhat high-waisted, not super high-waisted, uh, striped denim shorts made by Sassoon. So here's the tag there. That tag stayed the same in the, set in the 80s. I think they came out around the 70s, so I don't even think it's a brand anymore. Again, staple, like $30. I have no huge bangers, as they say. These are just uh, Disney Store pajama pants. Actually, they're Disney Park pajama pants. So this Mickey silhouette, these are vintage. They're from the 90s. This Mickey silhouette that you see is most prevalent on Disney Parks stuff from the 90s, late 90s. It's pretty cool. Late 90s, early 2000s even. Um, but these are cute, Christmassy, plaid, wintry pajama pants. Again, maybe $30. Uh, Katie found this for me. Um, vintage 90s, Barney and Baby Bop little thing. It's, I think it's a shirt. Um, it says size six. So if it's a size six, then it has to be a shirt and not a little dress. But look how felt and cute this is. Vintage Barney stuff does really well. Clothing, bedding, toys, Lions Group, usually dated. Um, this is the kind of stuff that would have been around when my daughter was little, but I didn't let her wear it or watch Barney because I hated Barney. Anywho, nostalgic. People like to dress their kids and stuff like they wore. Uh, this is just a vintage Moo Moo caftan. Um, I picked it up just because it's really lightweight, but also just a tip. I always buy these anyway. There's The tag is here. It's vintage. It's worn out. Who knows what the heck it is, but I always buy these when they have the tie at the waist because people love these moo's, but they really like to be able to put some definition under the bust so that you look like you have a shape and you're not just wearing a tent. So um, this will sell pretty well, actually, even though it's not a super high end quality or has a specific name, but this should sell for about 50 bucks and fairly quickly. Okay, um, this I just picked up because it's a super cute dress. I wish it fit me. In fact, if it did fit me, I'd probably keep it. Just a denim kind of country vest uh, dress with um, smocking at the waist, the stretchy smocking. It's a size medium, and it's made by Lapis. Lapis was occasionally sold through Anthropology, but it's not all Anthropology. So this is a pretty current dress, but it's pretty. So I would probably list it for like $40. Um, okay, so this is a vest that's vintage and reversible. It's wool plaid on one side. And then it's quilted on the other side. And I can't wash it because it's wool, but 
but it really actually doesn't need to be washed. It's in really nice vintage condition. You can tell by this really, really heavy metal zipper, Scoville zipper. Um, there's no tags anywhere. Usually when you have reversible items, the tags are gonna be inside the pockets on one side or the other. This has no tags, unfortunately. So I don't know the brand. I'm just gonna have to list it based on its own merits. Um, it does have a spot on the hood, which I'm gonna have to spot clean because again, I can't get it wet totally because of the wool, but that looks like it'll come out easily. All right, this is another one of my favorites. I debated so long about picking this up. I put it down three times, um, but then in, in the end, I had to get it. Um, this is a vintage reversible uh, swing coat. I mean, look at this plaid. Look at this plaid. It has great big deep pockets on both sides. So it's this plaid wool on the outside with these big mutton, buttons, very mod, very 60s mod. Um, and then again, reverses to a black like vinyl raincoat, also with super fun buttons. Uh, pockets on both sides. This is the brand, which is weird because it has the tag is different on both sides. So this says Mahajarani in London. Again, anything made in a foreign country is usually good. And then this size says Walk Sports in London. I'm not sure the brand, but my biggest issue and the reason why I debated about getting it is because it does have some moth holes. It has some damage. So you can see here on the sleeve, it has some damage. If you cough it, you won't see it down there, but it does have a couple little spots throughout the, the jacket right there. And then there's another area right here where there's a hole. Now, I don't think they're significant enough to not list it. There's a couple more in the back too. So, I mean, I'm gonna note all of this in the description. I'm sure it will affect the value, but it's not terrible. Um, I still think it's worth rescuing and wearing and saving. I'm gonna price this pretty high. I think I'm gonna price this around 150 just based on the style, it's just too cool. I love it. Okay, another vintage terry cloth, uh, polyester type maxi cover-up dress type thing. This one you may even wool blend. This one has a tag in it. The turtleneck does feel like wool. This is Neiman Marcus, and then that was the brand Periphery. Um, very, very 70s here. Again, it's brown. If it's brown, it's usually 70s. So I'll price this pretty high as well. I'll price this in the $100 range and take offers. Um, again, with the kids clothes, but this one at least is dead stock. So uh, this is a vintage uh, New York Yan Yankees little kids shirt, dead stock, size small, made in the USA, 1994. Look at how cute. So if you are a Yankees fan or you have a kid or grandkid that's a Yankees fan, let me know, hit me up. I'll probably list it for like 35 bucks, but obviously family and friends discount for any, any viewer. Um, okay, this is another Jesus tee. I would say this is probably early 2000s, but it may not even be vintage. It's on a Port Authority tag, which is iffy. They've had the same tags for a long time. Made in Haiti, but it's nice heavy weight and feels like it would be like 90s or 2000s because of the thickness of the, of the cotton blend. And it just says, okay, so um, higher powered, uh, again, this could be considered a Jesus tea and I'll probably um, market it as such, but also it could be something to do with like AA, NA, all of that kind of stuff. Cause you know, finding a higher power, that kind of thing. So I'll look it up. The logo might be something, might be not, I don't know, probably 30, 40 bucks. I just like the logo and the shirt and it's a good size. Um, uh, most of you guys know, I really like robes. So this is a really nice soft cotton blend robe with a pretty pattern that I picked up. It's got these really pretty purple and pink flowers on it. I'll probably list this for 30 or $40. It does have the tie, which is half the battle when you're buying things at the bins. No great brand. I think the Appel, I don't know what Appel is. Um, I don't think it's anything fancy, but just a basic 40, $50 uh, robe. And then this is just, this is vintage Carol Little, 80s Carol Little. Um, also, not nothing special. It's kind of like Alfred Dunner old lady clothing. However, this 
had a really super cool fabric and it's a woman's blouse. It's rayon and it has this really cool watercolor fish fold pattern. So I just got it because it's kind of fun. So um, it has little Velcro things in the shoulders. So it definitely had shoulder pads at some point. No longer does, thank God. And uh, I know, like $30, $40 shirt. Uh, Katie grabbed this for me. Um, one of the things I talked about is that our bins are getting rid of linens, which I hate because it is a huge amount of my inventory. Uh, but Katie found this mixed in with clothing yesterday, and this is just a vintage Precious Moments acrylic blanket. These sell for like $50. And then early 2000s, Elmo, Elmo's World, um, Zoe, it's 2004, so almost vintage. Um, Elmo's World, it's just a flat sheet. It's cute. I don't know if there's a million of them. It may be worth $5 and it may be worth $25. Uh, either way, I'll probably list it for like 15, 20 bucks. And then lastly, I did pick up one pair of shoes yesterday and these are boots. They need to be cleaned. They're pretty, I don't know what the hell happened to them, but they're pretty dirty, but it's just surface dirt. They're by that brand Fit Flop, which normally makes flip flops. They have that special arch support. Uh, these are really nice. These are a size nine, which is my size. I may end up keeping them. I don't know. They're in great shape heavy, thick, pebbled leather. They do sell for like $50 or so. And that is it. That's what I got yesterday. We're gonna do one more haul video this week and then Katie's gonna do her haul now. But first, any final thoughts on the all day bins challenge and would you do it again? Uh, I didn't make it all day, so um, no, I would not do it again. I don't see a benefit for me. I like being able to go in and get out early in two hours and fill a cart. This is the same amount of stuff that I would have purchased if I'd only stayed there for two hours. I was being kind of picky at first because I figured if we were gonna be there all day, I was gonna get so much stuff that I would probably need two carts at least, and that was not the case. So, end result, meh, I wouldn't do it again. Ooh, we got a little sunshine going on in here. It's a little earlier in the day. Um, we actually did the all day bins challenge yesterday but didn't, um, wasn't able, we were not able to do our haul. So it's the morning here on Thursday. Um, I said I was not gonna necessarily show everything because it was gonna be an all day haul, but um, I'll probably just quickly run through everything anyway. I definitely didn't get as much as I was hoping for. Um, I got more than a normal day when I would go obviously for two, two and a half hours. Um, but I had that full bag by 10 o'clock and then I really only got like a total of like three bags of stuff. I do think I overall, I got some really cool stuff, um, but I also think that it could have been accomplished. Um, it, it's just better to just go, uh, you know, in the mornings and not do the all day challenge. So it was still fun and I did get some cool stuff. Switch up the angle because the light coming in um, from the morning sun is making it so you can't see tags. Anyway, uh, first up, I've got this Polo, Ralph Lauren, Ralph Lauren, if you will, uh, dead stock, new with tags, shirt from the 2012 London Olympics. The only problem is this has quite a bit of staining. Um, I don't know if it got like liquid on it, water on it, uh, so I am going to have to wash it. I will have to I'll probably uh, spot treat it, and then I'm going to have to wash it with some color catchers because otherwise... Uh, like the threading here, this red is definitely going to bleed. Um, this isn't like a huge money maker, um, but I should be able to get at least $40 for it. Next up, I did get a lot of t-shirts, a lot of interesting t-shirts. This is, uh, this is Continue the Colgate Connection. This is like a university um, or college. Colgate, April Visit Days, Class of 2002. Um, so, you know, a lot of like kind of bread and butter, $30 to $40 tees. Uh, this on this uh, Fruit of a Loom tag. Uh, this is, I don't even know what this is, so maybe somebody out there knows. EAC Spring Thing. And this is the little graphic on the back. I don't know what that is, man. But this is probably late 90s, early 2000s. Um, again, a lot of these t-shirts are just gonna be like $30, $40 t-shirts. Uh, this shirt, this is a guest jeans um, kind of camp shirt. Aloha shirt, Hawaiian shirt, 100% rayon made in Korea. Vicky threw this my way. Um, it's very wrinkled, but if you look on the tag down here, it's got the 
Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. The old school guest tag right there. I'd say this is probably like a 90s, vintage 90s um, Hawaiian shirt. It's kind of heavy. It's interesting. Uh, next up, I got a bunch of like delivery dude shirts. So button down shirts that have companies on them. Um, there was a bin that had like tons of them. And this particular one, I literally grabbed like maybe 20 of them because there were so many and I just wanted to grab them all so I can inspect them. But a lot of them ended up uh, being stained. There were white ones and there were blue ones and they were all, they all seemed to be dry cleaned, but pretty much all of the white ones had like yellow stains on them. And I'm like, I'm not going to bother with trying to uh, rescue these. Um, but I was able to find two blue ones that did not seem to have any staining on them. And they're long sleeve. These are 7 Up RC. It's embroidered right there. They're just like dress shirts. Um, and they're very, they're all starched and everything. But like I said, I had like 20 of them that I had pulled out. All this uh, 7 Up and RC. Half of them were blue, half were white. Um, all the white ones were stained. A lot of the blue ones were stained. Um, but I was able to rescue two of them. And then all in the same bins. I don't know if they were all from the same guy. They might have been from the same dude. Uh, this is a vintage 90s uh, pyramid or maybe early 2K, Y2K pyramid ales beer shirt, long sleeve denim. So this is a really cool one. And then I got two denim shirts on this Copa, Copa banana tag. Um, and these are kind of denim, a little bit softer denim. These are Snapple. Let's get two of these. So... I mean, these aren't going to sell for a crazy amount, but hopefully I can get like 40 bucks a piece for them. Uh, next up, this is one that Jody handed to me. This is not vintage. It's Machine Gun Kelly Rap Devil t-shirt. Uh, you can see it's got the tag is printed on it. The reason I grabbed this is she, well, she's the one that gave it to me. And I was like, oh, that's probably not going to be worth anything. I looked it up. There's only one listed. Um, first of all, there's not a lot of Machine Gun Kelly shirts that I could find, but for this particular Rap Devil one, there's only one listed and it's listed for $120. Now, when I looked at solds, there were only like maybe three that were sold. Um, and they were they were sold for regular prices, like 20 bucks a piece. But there's literally only one available. Um, I figured I'd go ahead and list it, but list it for like 60 bucks. See if I can get like 40 for it, you know? It's worth a try. This is kind of a cool shirt. Illinois OM 1992, the brain brain grain state it's kind of cool it's got a little you can see a little brain there um in the grain and it's alice and omerland caroline illinois state champs i don't know what any of this means i gotta look it up this is all embroidered on the back but it's kind of cool kind of interesting um on the screen stars tag this is cool whoops this is cool it might be uh dead stock it's on the jostens tag this is a women's t-shirt um, this is UNLV and look at how ridiculously blinged out this shirt is. It's got Taz on it. Taz even has some googly eyes sewn on there. Uh, this is the way this one was made. It's like a short sleeve. It's sort of like a, it's a t-shirt, but it's very thick and it has the bottom that has shape to it. Um, it's the basketball, although well, it's got basketball, football, it's got all the sports, but it's dated, uh, 1990. So this is a ridiculously blinged out UNLV shirt and it even has some blingy bling on the back. So I don't know, maybe I'll get 40 for that. Next up, I've got this vintage, this might be 90s, more likely Y2K um, sweatshirt. It is embroidered here. It says Saquaro Classic. It's got a horse, so it's some sort of horse event. Um, so cute little horsey sweatshirt. Maybe get 40 for that. I haven't looked this up, but uh, people do love their Dutch bros. I know I love my Dutch bros. So it was really fun to find um, some Dutch bros swag in the uh, bins. You can see on the front, this is a really cool tie-dyed, kind of tie-dyed bleached hoodie. Um, you can see, it doesn't say anywhere Dutch Bros on it, but it has their logo. And it says established 1992. Dutch Bros is my favorite coffee. It comes from Oregon. Um, and then this is the back. It says, serving you since 92. So I haven't looked this up, but some of the Dutch Bros stuff, they come out with a lot of different um, uh, shirts and, and different merch and stuff, but it's constantly changing. So I don't know that there's a lot available of any one thing. So I haven't looked that up yet, but I couldn't resist it. 
This was one that somebody else had thrown back and I was happy to grab it. It's funny, you'll go through bins, you won't find anything, and then later on you walk by a bin you've already looked in and laying around top is some really cool piece of vintage because somebody just threw it back. This is on a Fruit of a Loom tag and it's a little bit, uh, it needs to be washed, it's a little, a little wrinkly. Third Annual Hargrove Military Academy Express Mart Invitational. This is like a, a basketball tournament, I think. Um, this is, uh, uh, it says Milford Academy, Har Hargrave Military Academy, Fork Union Military Academy, Valley Forge Military Academy. Um, so it must be some sort of basketball uh, tournament from 1994. So very cool. This is one of my favorite tees. Um, no tag. But it's single stitch, super soft, San Diego Zoo. This is probably probably 90s. It feels like it's all cotton. Um, I'd say it's probably early, like early 90s, but it's a really cute shirt. Next up, this is uh, not vintage, or actually it might be Y2K based on the tag. It has holes all over it. It's super worn, but I still wanted to grab it because, hey, I'm paying a buck. Um, this is like some ridiculous Kool-Aid man tee. It says Power Trip. We trippy main, and he looks like he's maybe on some drugs and tripping on the LSD, man. <clears throat> Next up, I've got this vintage 90s, early 2000s Nike sweatshirt, uh, Bulldog basketball. I'm gonna say it's probably George Bulldogs. Um, really nice. It's got the little center solution. I don't know if that'll do anything for me, uh, but uh, I'll probably put that up for like 70, hope for at least 50. Just a real basic Nautica bomber jacket um, in nice condition. I always love the, the Nautica zipper pulls. Um, maybe I can sell this for like 50 bucks. We got some more 501s, Levi's 501s. These are, I think, vintage 90s, early 2000s, and uh, they're in really nice condition. I'll, I'll list these. Um, and hope to get 50 to 60 bucks. I usually sell them for around 60, 63 dollars on Etsy. Next up, I've got a towel, another towel, guys. I sold that, uh, I sold that Club Med towel I got. This is a Speed Racer one from the 2008 movie. There are not any listed right now that look like this one. I think there's a couple listed, but um, none that are this exact design. And overall, only like a handful of them. I mean, I should be able to get like 30 to 40. Nothing crazy, but those are easy to photograph and easy to list. This is not vintage. It's just a Port Authority soft shell jacket, uh, but it is Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. Um, I like to pick up stuff that's like, you know, any school stuff, but also stuff that's kind of um, special programs or anything like that. And medical school seems to be one that, that, that I'm able to sell pretty well, but hopefully I sell that for 40 to 50. All right, I got a couple of these. Vicky was giving me some, giving me some heat over it, but uh, because I'm now buying these silk kimono robes. This one doesn't have a belt, but it's got the uh, embroidered dragon on the back. It's got a little bit of embroidery in the pockets. I didn't have a belt for this one, um, but I'll still probably be able to sell it for seventy-five to a hundred dollars. I hope. Just a silk robe, really nice. Now this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite finds of the day. And it is a, an awesome 80s ski jacket. Look at the colors on this. We got some cool colors, some patterns going on. And look at the back. Snowbound. Snowbound by Trespass. It's got some really cool like little embellishments, uh, features to it. It's got some cool little patches on it. Trespass, professional skiing. Um, and it's got, let's see, where's, there's another one somewhere over here on the sleeve. Performance, high tech. So just a really cool jacket. I'll probably list this for like 100 uh, at least. All right, super, super basic. Tommy Bahama. Maybe I can get like 30, 25, 30 bucks for that one. Nothing special. Next up, this is really super soft. This is on the Hanes Beefy T. That's going to be Y2K, early 2000s. It's got Devil Pups on it. I know I've heard of Devil Pups, but I can't remember what it is. I haven't looked it up. I'm sure somebody out there knows. Put it in the comments. Uh, this really cool vintage hoodie on this 
Chuan Limited tag. Um, the front says Manhattan Moves. The back says American Dance Theater Tour 1991. This is interesting because, I mean, I grabbed it. I like to grab anything that's like dance related. Um, and then like maybe an hour or so later, Jody had showed me a poster she had found and it was from the same show. It said Manhattan Moves and it had the dancers on the poster and it was signed, so it was kind of cool. I don't know if it's actually anything significant, but. All right, speaking of that Club Med towel I had before, because of that, Vicki threw this to me. Um, it's just a, an embroidered t-shirt that says Club Med, Turks and, I'm sure somebody else, it's a place, I don't know how to, what this is, Turks and whatever. Caicos? Yeah, Turks and Caicos, there you go. Um, it's kind of weird with the embroidery, but maybe I can get 30 bucks for it. Made in the U.S. It's on their own Club Med tag. It's a cool shirt that Jody had grabbed and was nice enough to give to me. Um, Cat's Delicatessen. I had another Cat's Delicatessen shirt that I had sold recently, uh, but the back is really awesome. It says, said the salami to your boy in the army. I don't know if you're supposed to say, to your boy in the army. Send a salami to your boy in the army. But anyway... Super cute shirt, funny. I don't know if there's other ones up there, but already listed. I grabbed this um, Echo Unlimited hoodie. Some of these do sell for quite a bit. Um, I think I can get at least 50 for this one. It's zip up. It's got some cool like uh, embellishments on it. Weekend Warriors. It's got a whole spell out on the sleeve. So I'll probably list it for 70 and hope to get 50. It's kind of heavy. This is one of the first things I, I found. And... Uh, it's a pretty good one. I'll have to do some pricing comps on it. It is 90s. You can see it's got the 99 on it. And as you can see, that's Ferrari. Uh, there's the tag, Ferrari. This is a Ferrari racing polo. This is FedEx Ferrari. And then it's embroidered Ferrari on the back. It's a really good condition. Looks like it's like a size, yeah, size large. So I don't know. I'll probably list that for like 70. Next up, super boring, blank tank top but this is vintage uh probably vintage 90s cs surf it's got the little cs there but it is like really a really nice soft cotton maybe i can get like 25 30 for that uh this is on this gildan activewear tag um this is like late 90s early 2000s it says hawaii aloha state Kauai. Um, it's got some cool flowers going on probably list that for like 40. Next up, I've got this embroidered long sleeve PBR uh, shirt, rodeo shirt. Um, this is based on the tag. This is probably, this might be a Y2K. Definitely not 90s, but it could be Y2K. But this is just like the rodeo thing. We always, we always say to pick up anything that has to do with the rodeo. Next up. Um, apparently I like to buy vintage children's hospital gowns because I've done it again. Still haven't sold the other ones I got, but you know, whatever. It cost me like a couple of cents, however, it's like a quarter for this, barely weighs anything. Um, but I just really like the pattern. It's just really cool. This is like a cowboy's pattern. You've got guns, you've got, um, covered wagon, cowboy boots. It's kind of a rodeo thing going on. Anyway, I think it's really cute. Maybe somebody would buy this to, to repurpose the material. There's, there's quite a bit of it there. They could make something little out of it. All right, next up, Made in the U.S. t-shirt, California State, Cal Poly, Pomona Broncos, Polytechnic University. Um, you know, nothing crazy. Made in the USA. I'll probably, you know, sell it for 40 bucks. Next up, I've got this sweet granny core late 90s sweatshirt right here i love it this is some serious granny core right here you've got uh all kinds of stuff going on with your hearts and your flowers and your birds and all that stuff so you try to sell it for like 40. next up gorman tennis hoodie it's got a nice big graphic on the front it says state champs 2002 which is kind of cool i don't know why I, I, I insist on getting high school stuff but i think i can still sell it for 40 bucks and here's another piece that uh vicky was jealous of this it's i don't know if this brand is anything but it's rochelle um, it's made in taiwan or roc 
So this is like an 80s sweater, almost a cardigan coat, because it is lined. You can see it's got this like acetate lining on the inside. Um, and there's a nylon lining. But look at the pattern on this. It's like a really cool geometric abstract pattern. Super awesome. I'll probably price this at least 100, 150. Hope to get at least 100 for it. Um, it doesn't need to be sweater shaved, but it is freaking awesome. I don't know where I'm gonna put it though because my two sweater bins are officially bulging. All right, I got University of Louisiana Monroe. This is like late 90s, early Y2K, long sleeve. Maybe I can sell for 40 bucks. See, I've got a lot of bread and butter with some really kind of cool pieces peppered in here and there. Um, Vicki gave me this one. It's a super shredded, worn and faded Hawaiian performance surfwear. It's a really cool graphic on it and it's super, super soft. So maybe I can get 40 bucks out of it. Next up, Land's End. But this is authentic rugby wear made in the US. Um, a really cool rugby shirt, blue with the thin yellow stripes. Just really cool. I don't know if I'll be able to find any comps on that, but hopefully I can get at least 50 bucks for it. Another one that Vicky threw me and probably regretted later. This is on the Fruit of the Loom tag made in Canada. This is vintage 90s. Uh, Toronto, Canada, kind of a cool little travel tee. Nice little art tee with the multicolored kind of mountains, hills in the background. We'll get about 40 for that. This we've got, it's on the Jansen tag. And it's got these dudes with their flags. It says Flags Jansen. Just kind of a fun little graphic. Maybe I can get 30 to 40 for that. It's 90s. Next up. I probably would not have grabbed this uh, at first glance. And I know Vicki said she did see it and didn't realize what it was. So she passed it up. Um, it's on the Gildan activewear tag. And this is probably Y2K. It's a... Uh, um, it's a ring ringer tee and it says 4th of July firecracker 50, an AMBC MTB Epic Breckenridge, Colorado. So I looked at it first. I'm just like, Oh, is this some, some kind of 4th of July t-shirt, whatever. Um, and then I saw MTB and I realized it was a mountain biking shirt for a mountain biking event. And then if you turn around the back, then you realize, yes, indeed it is for mountain biking. And so I grabbed that because I think the mountain biking stuff is cool. Um, you know, maybe I'll get 40. 50 bucks for that. Next up, we're just down to a couple more things, guys. I grabbed this. So this is St. John's Bay. You know, not a very exciting brand, but this is vintage 90s. And it's a nice heavy sweater, really cool pattern on it. Um, this will be a great uh, fourth quarter um, inventory item to have. And again, I'm paying like a couple bucks for it, so whatever, except for the fact that my sweater bins are bulging. Um, but hopefully I can get like 50 bucks for that. All right. Now I had shown you the other, uh, the, the silk Asian kimono robe. Um, but when I had said earlier in this video that Vicky was going to be mad at me, that was over that sweater, um, that, that uh, cardigan sweater jacket. And then what I'm going to show you right now, because I actually found that other silk robe later. So first of all, I did find the, the belt for this one. Now this one actually has the tags, 100% silk. This is vintage. Um, and it's got this, this really, really beautiful, intricate embroidery, hand embroidered. Um, and this has a, this robe actually has an extra layer. It has lining. So the embroidery does not go all the way through. It's just on the back there. And then you can see it on the sleeves and you can see it in the front. Uh, it's just really pretty hand embroidered, 100% silk. Uh, I love it. And when I found it, um, it didn't have the belt with it. And so I searched everywhere and I found it like in the next bin over. So I was really happy about that. Um, but this I hopefully would be able to, to sell for like 150. So apparently I sell kimonos now. All right, last two things. This is interesting, it's pretty heavy. I don't know if it's gonna sell right away, but it's interesting because it's this really big, Vintage, uh, super, super 90s uh, denim jacket. It's ridiculous. It even has shoulder pads in it. Uh, but then you look at the 
uh, look at the tag. It says Stone, Stone Canyon, where quality never ends, but then it's members only? And look at this crazy pattern on this lining. It's not blanket lines, it's just material um, printed on, but it's just a really cool pattern. So, and then it's got the, uh, why is my mind gone blank, corduroy collar. So, I couldn't pass it up, even though I probably paid a good bit, a bit of money for it. It's got to be at least four pounds, um, but it's ridiculous. But look at this. It's even got a cell phone pocket, guys. Look at that. You can put your cell phone right there. Not too shabby. All right, last thing I got. So I grabbed this. I'm like, I don't know anything about this. Um, and I figured I'd probably give it to Jesse because it's like a sports thing. But the more I looked at it, I will. I think I will do some comps and see if I can find it, if it's worth selling for myself. But it's 1986. This is basketball. I didn't know what this was. It says the Coca-Cola NIT Classic. And then I was reading it more and realized that I don't know if they do it anymore, but Coca-Cola used to do, it was basically like a preseason tournament that Coca-Cola put on. And this was the second year ever that they did it in 1986. And so it's just this really cool, interesting magazine. The ads are cool. Um, it highlights like all these players from, from all these different college teams. And it was just this thing that they did um, that would last like, I think a few days in November. And uh, so yeah, so I think I'm gonna have to look it up and just see if it's worth selling myself. Or like I said, I'll pass it along to Jesse and let him handle it and figure it out. But it seems pretty, pretty cool. I like it. I like this old stuff. Anyway, that's everything. So this is gonna be a really long video all in all, but I guess it was an all day challenge. So it makes sense that you'd get an extra long video out of it. Um, let us know what you think about everything that we found. Like I said, we are not planning on doing this again. We realized that, you know, it was really good in the morning. There was a huge lull in the middle of the day that included like the, the um, rotation slowing down quite a bit. And then it kind of like had a decent finish. Um, but it just isn't worth it to be there all day. Um, if you're gonna go to the bins here in Vegas anyway, your best bet is to come right away in the morning, the first few hours. Everybody's fresh, uh, stuff moves quickly. You can find a lot of stuff. And it just gets crazy busy in the afternoon. I feel like that's when a lot of like just random people show up and it just kind of gets packed. Um, but it was a fun challenge anyway. And I did find some stuff that I'm really happy that I have now. So all in all, it was a success. And we will see you guys later.